there are lots of scanning tools available to check certificates on our sites, make sure that they're following security standards. We can also do some checks manually quickly, and this can be helpful when a scanner is not available, the site might still be in a development pipeline or on an internet setting, or we just need to do a, a quick check right away. So first of all, browse to the HTTPS version of the site. And we're gonna check and see if there's any kind of warnings thrown up by the browser. In this case, we do have a warning by the browser and it's saying that there's a problem with certificate. So let's take a closer look at the cert. So for one thing, the browser is giving us a visible warning and we would have to add an exception to the site in order to proceed. We don't want this for our users. For one thing, it's not a good practice. We're teaching our users to click through warnings and that could cause problems for them later. We're also counteracting any kind of security awareness training that we might have done by again telling the users to click through warnings. If we take a look at the certificate more closely, we can see that there's some information available in the browser, but if you just look at the cert by clicking on view certificate, you'll be able to do several quick checks. For one thing, is the certificate signed by a valid certificate authority that's trusted? We already know it's not because we got the certificate warning when we tried to browse to the HTTPS version of the site. But we can also see here that the signatory is not a commonly trusted entity. We're also checking to see if the common name of the cert matches the domain name in the site. In this case, it does. So the certificate passes that particular check. And those two names need to match exactly. It could be that the alternate name for the site is in the subject alternative name, but it's, that's not best practice. We wanna have the primary domain name for the site be in the common name field. As far as the dates for the certificate, we wanna make sure that the certificate is not valid for more than a year. Now, technically you can stretch this to around 400 days, but one year is best practice. At the same time, check the date to see if it's expired. In this case, the certificate is only valid for a year, which is good. However, that year is up. The expiration date has already passed. When we're checking the algorithm for the key size, the key size that's best depends on the algorithm itself. RSA is a common algorithm, and for the RSA, we wanna make sure that the key size is at least 2048. It's okay if it's longer, it could be 3072, but we definitely don't wanna have it any less than 2048. In particular, if you see one that's 1024, that's too short, certificate's no good. For the signature algorithm, you're typically gonna see some sort of SHA. There was MD5 at one time, but that has long since passed. And the only two that you're probably gonna see nowadays would either be a SHA-1 or just SHA or a SHA-256. You wanna validate that this is SHA-256. You don't wanna see the SHA-1. So those are several different checks that we can do quickly without needing any type of scanner or other tool to do the certificate check. And this provides us a way to manually just do a sanity check on our certificates 